Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. This is Jeremiah's J Man Manero with J Man Speaks coming to you live and direct from our global headquarters here in Rochester, New York. Today, we're talking about international real estate. Uh, we're not internationally known, but we're known to rock the microphone occasionally. And we're here. I'm going I'm to put on my international hat as we get started. I think that's just about right. We're here in sunny Rochester, New York, where it is a balmy 48 degrees. But we are going to be bringing in uh, a couple of guests from international. Here we go. We got Victor Rivera and Grant McLean coming to us from Costa Rica, baby. Let's give them a round of applause, everybody. All right, guys. Well, welcome to the show. Thanks for being on Ask the Experts Anything Meaningful Friday, also known as A Team. We're big fans, obviously. Uh, we love it when a plan comes together. So, talk to us about what we're going to be talking about today, Costa Rica. We're going to be talking to you today about Costa Rica. <laughs> Coming to Costa Rica, we're going to be talking about buying houses and, and what to expect. If you have that itch to get out of Rochester, if you've got clients that want to come down and do something different and buy a second home, Grant is, is an expert and I am learning. So we're here to talk to you about that. Okay. Well, yeah. Why don't we get started with like an introduction of who you are, kind of like your history. I, I learned a lot about Grant just in, a, in, a, in our pre-interview, uh, if you will, about where he came from and he's and, and how he settled to be, and, and Victor just, did you go there on vacation and just decided to stay, or what happened? Um, I bought a business. I came here a couple of years ago for the first time and fell in love with okay. the country. <laughs> Honey, if you're watching, with the country, with the country. Um, my, my story is a little bit longer. Yeah. I came here 28 years ago as a college student, studied internationally at the University of Costa Rica, Wound up falling in love, married my girlfriend. We've now been married and raised two boys here who are now, uh, one's graduated from college, the other one's in college, and I've raised a family here. And uh, I'm still a US citizen, but I'm also now a Costa Rican citizen. And uh, no regrets. Living here is pura vida. Nice, nice. And you're originally from Vermont, right? Northeastern? I'm originally from Vermont, yes, in the Northeast. And going back to those winters is not an option at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't imagine why being from the Northeast myself, like you would just be like, oh, wow, Costa Rica. Yeah, I want to settle here. Uh, <laughs> those, those winters, we just love our change of seasons, I guess. Uh, well, let's let's get started with the with the why. We always like to start with the why. Like, you know, I I learned a lot about Costa Rica in the last thirty days from my cousin, but even in the last twenty four hours, as far as some of the information that you gave me, um, with all the options and with real estate being so crazy, why Costa Rica? Uh, J Man, here where we live is the Northwest Pacific Coast. Mm -hmm. of Costa Rica. It's called the Nicoya Peninsula. On the Nicoya Peninsula, this is considered one of the six blue zones in the world. The blue zones are where you have the longest longevity. So you go through this peninsula where we're living and you go through the small towns and the small towns have five, 10, 100 year old citizens. People, scientists come here from around the world to study the longevity of the people and the lifestyle and why people just simply live here longer. As we discussed yesterday, the thing to me that makes Costa Rica real unique though, not just the fact that they live a long time is that Costa Ricans year after year after year are always rated on the top of the happy planet index the costa rican people are just some of the happiest most welcoming people in the world and when you can sprinkle in marinas and white sand beaches and golf courses and just world-class sport fishing and amenities and resorts and volcanoes and waterfalls it's a nice mix to have the great people the long life a great lifestyle it's 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 a nice option Wow, I mean, uh, so why didn't you give me just one one reason, you know, just <laughs> it's like, okay, 
If you want to live a longer life, everybody. If you want to be around happier people, everybody, except New Yorkers. Maybe some New Yorkers <laughs> be around happier people. Uh, but then, and then if you if you love that outdoor living, and we always like to say like the forever young. It used to be people would retire and then they would just fade away. I think the new retirement is what am I going to do? How can I remain active? Where can I, you know, do things uh, where, where the destination is the attraction, right? Right. You're not going there to go to a theme park. You're going there to go hiking, to go do all the water sports, the fishing and everything like that. Uh, you, you brought up the happy planet index and I had never heard of this. Tell, tell me a little bit about that. Well, I'm, I'm not going to tell you that I'm an expert on the Happy Planet Index, but yeah. there's so yeah. much – there's been so much press about it here in Costa Rica in the last five to ten years. Uh, they go out and look at economic factors, health care, quality of living, uh, all of these different factors. You know, one factor that also plays into the quality of living – here in Costa Rica, people consider it the Switzerland of the Americas. Costa Rica has no standing military. In 1948, they abolished the military with the concept that they would put all of that money into education. So there's a lot of things that choices that they've made over the years uh, that have kept their standard of living very high. They're very welcoming to Americans. And I'm not sure I know the com the, the exact combination of why they're the happiest people in the world but they they study it and costa rica is always at the top of the list yeah so uh, as as you were talking i segue right to happyplanetindex.org folks uh this is where we're bringing you factual information you know there's a lot of people out there that would just be like no it's a happy place you know there's certain certain theme parks that might call themselves the happiest place on earth but i think we have found it factually speaking uh, if you look at here, the life expectancy, 79.1 years, uh, the well-being, 7.3, ecological footprint, and then it has exactly what, what Grant just paraphrased for us uh, about them abolishing the Army in 1949 and relocating Army funds to be spent on education, health, and pensions. I mean, talk about a risky move. Like, how— <laughs> How do you abolish an army and then not have the next door neighbor go, "Hey guys, we're taking you over"? Like, how does that how does that work? You know, you weren't around at that. You time. got nice neighbors. Yeah. Panama and Honduras or Nicaragua. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. That's like that really tall guy named Tiny. Well, I think Costa Rica has Costa Rica has friends in uh, in high places and has a lot of uh, friends around the world that. Uh, would help protect it but uh you know they it was a civil war in 1948 and when they finished that civil war they put down their guns and threw them away um, uh, not that there's no guns but there's no military in the country and uh it's made a big difference in the level of education here we don't need to get into all of this but that's also why intel has intel has put a billion dollars into processing plants because costa rica has a very highly educated, high level middle class. So a lot of international tech companies actually come here in, in around the city. It's become a little bit of a technology and um, uh, manufacturing hub in the Americas as well. Okay, get, give us a little bit of an idea where, where you guys are for looking at a, at a map of, and, and here's another misconception, I think of the location of Costa Rica. I'm going to be honest. I thought it was an island. I, don't, I, I can't lie. I can't lie. I thought it was an island in the Caribbean. And I'm like, I do. I went to the Happy Planet Index and I'm like, oh, shoot. It's, oh, oh okay. Because uh, you have all those coasts, you have all the beaches and all that. Is it it's just kind of how the, the country, the, the shoreline, right? You have a lot of shoreline. I think the pictures will probably throw you off because of all the water that's around, all the palm trees. So it does look to to Caribbean island. It looks very similar to Caribbean island. Um, but in actuality, this is a great thing about Costa Rica. We've got mountains that from the beach, you can see the mountains. We have volcanoes 
We've got rainforest. Where, so the ecosystem here makes it look like somewhat Puerto Rico that has the rainforest, but we have bigger mountains here and, and there's a lot to do. We're, cent we're located in Central America. Panama is to the south, Nicaragua is to the north. And from Miami, it's only a two and a half hour flight. Two and a half hours, Brady, think? Two and a half hours. Two and, and, from half Houston. Hours. and from Houston as well. Okay. okay. So let's talk about the how, because I think as, as people, our real estate market is crazy all across, I don't, I don't, not even just the United States. I, I talked to somebody from Canada yesterday. I talked to another person from Brazil. I think it's crazy everywhere as far as like, you know, houses for sale are way down. Everybody's looking for opportunities to invest their money elsewhere. You know, as you, even like little Rochester, New York, where I'm from, our, our market's up 54.7% average sale price. You know, and that's historically we're like five to seven percent. So that's just to kind of give you an idea of a affordability. And then, you know, Victor can tell you, Vermont's probably a lot less, but the taxes in, in upstate New York and New York in general are, are the highest in the country. So how how can somebody get started investing in Costa Rica? Well, let me let me just mention you said taxes for a minute there, J Man. Uh, tax property taxes in Costa Rica are one quarter of one percent of the property value. So million dollar home is going to pay $2,500 in property taxes. There are some uh, other municipal fees. Say, but say, you got you to you gotta have to repeat that one more time. <laughs> For those who aren't listening well, a million-dollar house, what are the taxes? $2,500, one quarter of 1% of the value. We got to give that a DJ air horn, folks, if you don't give something else today. Like, that, that is unbelievable. So, I mean, affordability. Like, if you could buy a million-dollar home in New York City, you could probably buy a three- or four-million-dollar home, you know, if you talk about what, what, what the total – your total investment might be. Um, wow. And it, what about insurance? Let's talk about that. I mean, taxes and insurance kind of go hand-in-hand. What part of insurance? All of the parts. Like, do we need do we need hurricane insurance? Do we need flood insurance? Is, uh, is there like property and casualty insurance? If there's, you know, uh, Victor and I are Puerto Rican, and we had some issues there, and some of some of our, you know, they weren't covered during the hurt during the earthquake or during the well, hurricane and stuff like that. What Costa Rica is. Uh, unique uh, or different than the Caribbean in that Costa Rica is really out of the main hurricane pathway that comes through the Caribbean every year. We get rain during that part of the year, but we do not live in fear of hurricanes like many of the islands do on the Gulf Coast in the Caribbean. Uh, that's not really an issue here. Uh, we have property insurance, uh, homeowners insurance, uh, depending on the, I mean, we have a lot of different agents. Just depends on the size of the. I, mean, I can't give you a quote, but just depends, oh, yeah, just depends on the size of the property. But uh, yeah, we have all of those uh, insurance options and protections. Yes. Okay. And we also we also have international uh, agents locally. There are some uh, international health insurance options for expats here as well. Because a lot of people come to Costa Rica to have health procedures, which cost a fraction of what they do in North America as well. So there's also, if you live here, you can you can have uh, international health care options, which gives you the options of health care in Costa Rica or flying back to North America. But, you know, ironically, many North Americans are flying here to have their medical procedures done. If you so, haven't heard of medical tourism, they have medical tourism here where to get dental work or some kind of medical procedure, it's cheaper to get a flight, stay here, rehab in front of the beach, and go back home than it is to do something back in the States. Okay, so when you say medical procedure, are we saying like medical procedures? Or are we saying like medical procedures? 
if you know what I mean. Like, well, it could be anything. For, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Dental and cosmetic are are the top options. Okay, so you could go there. It could be cheaper. You get a vacation. You could probably find a way to write it off in some. So three, come three, here, three. get your get your teeth done, and buy a house. Perfect. So the, the, in, I'll, give, in, you, I'll right. give you another quick example. Yep. There's a lot of diabetics in the United States, and to get insulin, there's one that costs three hundred twenty-seven dollars if you don't have insurance in the United States. Plus, you have to see a doctor, get a prescription. Here, you go down to the local pharmacy, you get it for fifty dollars. You're done. Wow. <laughs> 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 That's crazy. It's so crazy. So in, in buying real estate, we always look at the ability to purchase. What What is it like? It, are, are mortgages available? Do some people have to come with, you know, cash in a briefcase? Uh, what's what's the sitch? What's the situation there? Uh, this is this is mostly a cash market here uh, there. It's really difficult to get a, a mortgage from for it's very difficult for anybody from North America, US or Canada to get a mortgage from a Costa Rican bank or from a North American bank to purchase down here. So it's been traditionally mostly a cash market. We can on occasion, I'm working on a deal right now where uh, $950,000 sale, we're gonna get a little bit of seller financing. The seller is gonna offer $250,000 of financing for three years at six percent so when when the buyer needs a little bit of help we try to identify sellers who 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 will flex a little bit and offer sort of seller financing in some select deals we know private money people who can help out with lending but traditionally it's a cash market okay like in many other places cash is king folks so you know save those commission checks if you're in real estate um, just keep, just keep stacking them, invest them. But it, how do people take ownership? Cause I know like other parts internationally, like Mexico or it, it, a real estate investment trust might be required or you have to buy in an LLC or a corporation. Can people just buy in their own personal name if they have? Yes, you can buy in your own personal name and 95% of the properties that we deal with are fee simple titled property. So you own it, it's a title registered in the National Registry. It can be registered in your personal name. It's most likely that your attorney will recommend that you own it in a Costa Rican style LLC. But you have the exact same ownership privileges as a Costa Rican does. You own it fully in your name, outright, be simple titled. Excellent. So we, we have a question here. Did he say what the average home price might be? So let's just say, you know, entry level, I'm coming in and, and, and maybe there, there's homes and I'm sure there's also condos that are available, right? Um, maybe there isn't, but I'm just assuming. What's the availability of like a entry level home, mid-level and then luxury? Well, that vary, in, in the region that we're in, that varies from community to community. If, if you want to be in right in the town of Tamarindo, which is the real most active tourism hub, an entry level home may be running in the four hundred to five hundred thousand dollar range and high end luxury homes, four million to five million and up. Now, if you don't want to be in that busy tourism hub and you want to come 15 minutes up the coast, say, close to where they're building the new Flamingo Marina. There's a little village called Portretto where actually both Victor and I uh, live currently. And you can buy in Portretto, you can buy a, you know, a simple $200,000, $250,000, dollars $300,000 home that's three blocks, walk to restaurants, walk to the beach. And again, get up on the mountain, the big luxury homes or right down behind Flamingo Beach, which is a very high-end luxury area. You know, the homes will again, three, four, five to $10 million. But, you know, 
we could also find you a lot for one hundred thousand dollars walk to the beach very easily nice and you should just build a little house you also have some people that that do some sort of real estate speculation that say, "Hey, this is going to be up and coming in five to ten years. It's, there's nobody around right now, so let me buy 10, 15 acres and let that let that grow out in the next upcoming year, two years, five years, whatever the case is." Um, those lots, Grant can attest to, probably a little bit lower because there's nobody there right now. There's probably not even infrastructure on some of these, so it just depends on what's in your budget and your time frame. Those are two important factors. Okay, so and, go ahead, Grant. Well, uh, what I was gonna say is, you know, the other, there are other factors driving people into this area as well. And believe it or not, in this little community that we have on the Pacific coast of Costa Rica, there are, you know, five or six private and uh, uh, mixed of private and public uh, schools. And there are families from all over the world who are moving here. This is not just a like a snowbird community. There are so many families moving here with young children who work, uh, either the parents uh, can work remotely or they own their own businesses, but thousands of families, it seems like, are moving here with children to, to raise their children here because of the schools in this area. And one more thing, as a, being from Rochester, I have actually met more Canadians here than I have in Rochester. And that's because Toronto, they keep the Canadians there. They don't come over that much to um, come down here. There's a lot of business owners. So you see Italian, the United States is probably the top two here in Potrero. Wow. Strong Toronto market too. Yeah. Very strong. Well, and, it, and I think that's that's a, has a lot to do with the affordability. I know that in Toronto, condos have surpassed single-family residential sales just because it's so – expensive and i would imagine being able to buy in costa rica with the taxes being so low and really in comparison it's a no-brainer um but you, you mentioned you mentioned the lot I, I want to come back to that um so if somebody acquired a lot they wanted to build on what are the building costs like you know and i know obviously the the short answer is it depends we understand that in real estate like on the finishes and, and what you do but like just an average price per square foot for like a, an, an entry level, I imagine a ranch or, you know, single single level or something like that. Well, <clears throat> let me just tell you this. Traditional, just so that you understand the difference between construction in Rochester and construction in Costa Rica. Yeah. Traditionally in Costa Rica, construction, we're, we're doing concrete block yeah. construction, yeah. infill yeah. with rebar, real solid construction. <clears throat> we have access to finishes that come in here from all over the world. Uh, I would think you could build a really gorgeous home for $140 a foot. $140? Oh, that's not bad. So 140 And again, I mean, again, going back to it depends. Right. I've seen gorgeous right. homes that are closer to $100 a square foot. I've seen other homes that are $300 a square foot that I would not want. I wouldn't want to touch them with a 10-foot pole. So it depends, you know. But what we do have access to is we have access to uh, really talented architects who are bilingual, lots of contractors who speak English. Uh, I think what, what Victor and I can really add a lot of value to help avoid the pitfalls of – you know, some people will try to cut corners. They're the ones that usually at the end, you know, have made a mistake and it might sour their Costa Rica experience. You know, we are, we're building with civil engineers and people who are certified and licensed to do business here. Um, but, you know, knowing who to do business with and who not to do business with and being able to show you this is the guy and look at what he's built Here's, here's his portfolio, you know, it means something rather than just kind of promises of what we'll do for you. Having been here for 25 years, you, you know, you see people who, who last the test of time. Yeah, and that's a perfect segue to how to find properties. There isn't a typical MLS there, right? Like we're used to, 
you know, you're, you're in the United States, you just go, I want to find a house, click a button, all the houses are there. And that's not the case. It's more of a network of, of brokers or agents that know what's going, you know, what's available, what's out there. So even more important than anywhere else to contact a professional like yourself who's been there for a while, not somebody who just moved down because they came on vacation, <clears throat> Victor. Um, but <laughs> so, somebody like yourself who's, but Victor's smart enough to, you know, find the expert in the area yep. and, and uh, uh, rely on their expertise. So just talk on that a little bit about how to find the listings, the deals, the lots. You know, I'm, as a tourist, I'm not just going to fly down and, and drive around. That's not a good strategy. I'm going to Go give ahead. you a real life example before. Um, before Grant answers. So yesterday, Grant went to San Jose for some medical stuff, as we talked about before. And um, I was left with, with the clients. And clients here, the target, uh, last week, there's an international lawyer that came in. There's a construction manager from LA. Um, yesterday's oil and gas guy that um, his business got sold, it hasn't worked in a year. So these are some of the clients that, that are coming down and looking for things. But I was tasked with showing them different properties and that network i got to see that network where i'm calling on whatsapp hey tell me about your listing send me the location and it, it went really smooth not as smooth as mls that just gives you google maps and here's a property call the agent to get in um but it was it, it's a different feel because you get to know people on a different level you have those conversations you're like, hey, I'm running a little bit behind because it took a little bit longer. Um, but that is, I got to see that firsthand. And it was an interesting experience to what I've seen in the United States. But what do you want to add to that, Grant? Yeah, it's, uh, we do not have a traditional MLS system here. There have been attempts at it. And it's amazing how uh, political setting up an MLS system might be. But uh, we really don't have, there, there have been attempts I would say now we still don't really have a true functioning MLS. There are bits and pieces of them, but it's really knowledge is king, understanding the histories, knowing the agents. As I've explained to Victor in just his becoming an agent in Costa Rica, it's, it's knowing who the experts are in each individual geographic area and saying, these guys, these guys having the networks and really being able to exhaust those networks for the buyer. Finding, all, exhausting the options. And um, it's really difficult to do if you don't know who's who and, and how to connect the dots. Well, I, I think we're doing a pretty good job at selling them on Costa Rica. What, let's talk about logistics and transportation. Uh, what's a, when's a good time to, you know, if, if right now we're like, Hey, we want to plan a vacation. Once our section of the country starts to open up more, whatever that might look like, um, when's a good time to travel and where you guys are located. Cause I feel that's, that's a better location in my opinion, in my brief, you know, uh, studying of the area. And since Victor settled there, I'll, I'll say it's a better area, but, uh, your location, what's the better airport to fly into? Because I think Victor had mentioned something to me, like if you fly into this other one, it'll take you five hours to get to the beach rather than the one that's closer to you guys. Correct. So the, the traditionally the main airport in, in Costa Rica has always been San Jose. The reason that Guanacaste has really been booming is about 20 years ago, they opened the new international airport on the coast. That's called the Liberia International Airport, L-I-R is the airport code. Like we were saying earlier, two and a half hour flight from Miami, uh, direct flight from Houston, direct flight from Dallas, uh, Charlotte, direct flight from Newark, direct flight from JFK, seasonal direct flights from Boston. Now, of course, COVID has disrupted uh, many of the flights that we had pre-COVID, but they're slowly coming back on and there are parts of the country where it's, you know, it's, it's still relatively easy to get here from the East Coast and there are some pretty good select flights out of LA, Alaska Air out of LA flies here, direct to Liberia, but you know, JFK, United, American, they all have direct flights right into Liberia. It's easier nice. to get here, it's easier to get here 
than it is for a lot of people to get to the West Coast of the U.S. Okay. And, awesome. and we, we mentioned Liberia over San Jose, the four to five hours to yeah. the beach. Liberia, you get in a shuttle or you rent a car and you come out and within an hour you're at the beach. San Jose is a little bit more complicated. There's a lot more traffic. San Jose is a nice city, but if you want that beach life, go into Liberia to get here. All about that beach oh, life. Okay. So let, let's, uh, you get, you sent me some videos. Well, Victor sent them to me at the last minute, like seven minutes before our broadcast, but I was able to get them in because <laughs> you're welcome. I'm clutch and I can handle the pressure. Uh, so let's, I think, you, let me see what this first one is. Oh, okay. So I'll, I'll pause it before it goes. So tell me a little bit about this area and, and, and what we're looking at. This is look, obviously looks like a jungle and a waterfall, but um, how far is that from where you are? Maybe voice it over as I'll lower the volume a little bit because you don't really need the, the right. music. Go ahead, do a yeah, sure. de la vieja. Yeah. So when you fly into Liberia, you come out to the beach. And then if you want to get to something like this, this is only an hour. Well, who are these guys? There we go. Okay. So this is a lot of what Costa Rica has to have. And it's about an hour away. About an hour? Yep. And there, it, so, is, go ahead, Grant. Just just north of Liberia, there is a volc the volcanic mountain range which runs down the spine of Central America. Literally, when you come in and land at the Liberia airport, you come out and look up, and there's a, a mountain range that's all volcanic peaks, and along that mountain range there are. Uh, aqua blue rivers and waterfalls and nice. mountain nice. biking and adventure tours and just hot springs, hot springs and just national national parks it's just really really beautiful hiking and just majestic beautiful areas to hike and so like and if, yes if you were if you were thinking about you know, maybe buying a lot, building something like really the house doesn't have to be that extravagant or luxurious because you're going to spend most of your time outside doing things anyways. Right. I mean, depending on yeah, just think of the house, house is the base is base camp. Right. So once you're right. set up at base camp, you can go out on all the adventures you want to just need a kitchen and a hammock. You'd be good to go. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see what else they have. Here. Oh, this is cool. This is like a lagoon kind of a thing. That's in the, that's in the same area. That's a uh, one of these hidden waterfalls and lagoons uh, that's kind of down in these uh, awesome. canyons awesome. beyond the waterfall, uh, beyond the volcanoes. So I saw the picture of this advertised on Facebook. One of the guides down here, and the pictures look beautiful. I verified it three weeks ago by going on this spe this specific hike. There's ropes. There's ladders. It was incredible. And when you get to the final one, it's called La Leona. It's just, it's inside of a cave and it has a roof to it or an opening where some sunlight comes through or like right there, but it's, it's just wonderful. And that you, is this the one you told me it's like probably like a two hour hike, two and a half hours round trip. Yep. Two and a half hours. That's nice. All yeah. Right. It's, it's, uh, unbelievable. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's, uh, Rincón de la Vieja National Park, uh, Volcán Tenorio, Rio Celeste. There's like aqua blue, aqua blue, 50 foot waterfall coming out of the mountains. Just crazy stuff. All right. Now, now we're getting to some real estate here. You want to give us a grant? You want to give us the voiceover on this one? I'll, I'll do this. This is Mar Vista is a community here where okay. you have okay. with range in Mar Vista as far as home sales. Home prices, uh, high six figures up to three to four million dollar homes, ocean view homes that are uh, kind of five minutes from Flamingo Beach and the new Flamingo Marina, which Victor and I are kind of looking at across the way here. We'll show you that at the, at the end here. But this is a house that was just recently sold. But this gives you an idea of what Co Costa Rica has to offer on the high end, on the luxury end. Yeah. Um, Grant with Tamarindo Real Estate focuses on luxury there's other things as well but this is what you can expect a lot of people don't realize what costa rica has to offer and this has an incredible ocean view and that's why the neighborhood is called mar vista yeah this was a 2.2 million dollar sale 2.6 on 2. this 2.6 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 
and I didn't sell that one. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at it. And that was designed by an architect and built by an architect. Looks like it. All master suites in that house. I'm waiting for the sizzle. Where's the, where's the view? Where's the view? Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. <laughs> And that's the shower that has all the showers have windows. That's why it has the the opaqueness down below or that that film. Yeah, I mean, it, I I wouldn't want that. I know. I want a shower? <laughs> <laughs> you know, during during this COVID real estate spike, there's been a crazy run on properties like like we haven't seen probably since I don't know. 2006, 2007, but uh, there's still opportunities. You know, as I, as I, we've been saying, if you're a prudent buyer, you come down, you get educated, you're patient, the opportunities are out there. Uh, it's not, I'm not saying, you know, the market is definitely strong. I don't want you to buy into any feeding frenzy. We're here to protect the interest of the buyer. You know, there are certainly properties that we that we promote exclusively. But if you're coming down here, we're going to put you on to the best attorneys who are going to look out for you. And even, you know, just Victor and I strategizing this week, uh, you know, we want to be aggressive with presenting offers, but we want to be aggressive with offers that will uh, tie up properties without putting our buyer into any initial risk. These are non-refundable deposits. You can do your due diligence. Nobody's pushing you into sales. Uh, the attorneys uh, look out for your best interest. So there's a lot of protections. There's also a lot of people that you don't want to do business with who aren't going to look out for your best interest. So again, that's like where we like to think that we can add some value. And I'm going to make a little plug there. A lot of people come down here to purchase a business. So the commercial side of things, we can take a look. I was with Accenture and Deloitte for, for 13 years. So as far as analyzing PNL statements to see if it's a good deal, um, and we'll work with attorneys and things like that. I purchased a business down here in Costa Rica and um, helping you do that and navigate through what that means um, will be very important and we can help consult with it. We, we got one of our viewers here, Leticia. She says, absolutely breathtaking. I will need a guide. I can see taking a wrong left turn. Oh, she's got a bad, bad sense of direction. But, and we were even Victor, talking about- Victor's Victor. single. No, he's not. <laughs> I'm probably going to get- Grant, you're not trouble. supposed to say that, Grant. It's only during happy hour, man. And now um, I can't show this video to my girl. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we, we, no, we are. Victor, he, Victor can guide her with the, with his buggy business. Uh, she can show her the sites. Yeah. And, and there's, I've learned so much in the past. I, I'm an explorer. So as far as, as far as sending you to different places and the people here are great. Like we said before. Um, I have, I don't know if you know this, J-Man, but um, our cousin Jenny says coming down in June and she's going to be here for about five days and we'll have, so, I'll have somebody take care of them and, and take them to different places because I have to head back to the States for a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> to like, oh, my cousin's it. coming and I'm leaving. So make sure the you same tell me you. you. I know. Make sure our, I'm not going to tell you. I'm just going to knock on your door like, Victor, I'm down here. Open up. So we're going to start to shift as, as you do that. I just want to, because I know we're coming to close here, but I don't know if you can see some of the. No, I could. The, your virtual background is amazing. <laughs> you can seal it. Can I take it up there? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Must have really strong Wi-Fi. So where are you? Are you at the Flamingo Resort? The Costa Rican Navy right in front of you. The Costa Rican Navy? That's cool. Yeah, that's kind of just a, yeah it's, just, it's a sailboat. <laughs> I was say, I thought they were All right, so I, I guess the last thing, we, last thing before we go... 
what what are the vacation rentals like? Because I, I think that's would be a great experience if somebody was coming out. I know there's a resort right near Victor that I was even looking at at staying. Um, but you have like Airbnbs, right? What what are, and I get those probably range in price. But if I was looking to buy something and then maybe do short term rentals, are there any restrictions on that? Um, what are the rates like? Can that kind of pay for itself? I'll talk to you about if you come down. A lot of people come down, they're like, hey, I've been coming down for 10 years and they've been renting. And then Grant, I think it's important for him to talk about what about a, a rental, a real estate property that's going to bring you money, a revenue property. Yeah. Um, we're seeing it by, well, we're here at Valle del Sol. Um, it's a very nice property. It's a boutique hotel um, that is right on the beach. Then you have um, bigger places like the Westin. We have the W that from here is about 10, 15 minutes. And then we have Margaritaville. Margaritaville is right down uh, Flamingo, like on the other side of the peninsula over here. We can see Flamingo, and, and it's over on the other side. And then, yes, Airbnbs. There's some great Airbnbs that you can stay at. There's some great luxury homes that you can stay at as far as coming down here. Yeah. As far as purchasing and having those work for you, I'll, I'm going to defer some of that to Grant. And, again, uh, feel free. I will tell you, we are not – rental specialists, but we have uh, rental agents who work side by side with us, some of the best companies in town, and uh, just contact us and we'll put you on to uh, the best rental options. What's the question to me? What about um, rental properties as far as purchasing? So in terms of rental properties, in terms of purchasing, it really depends on your goals. We have people who want to buy a house and maximize rental income. We want people, we have people who buy houses and they say, I never want somebody to sleep in my bed. Yeah. It all depends on the client. But if, if you're going for the income option, uh, number of bedrooms and sleep count, getting those numbers up, uh, is really going to help maximize the amount of income when you can take a house and that house can accommodate two or three families or two or three heads of households and hold 14, 16, 20 people. Those are the highly most profitable houses, ocean view houses, beachfront houses. There are other options, you know, three bedroom homes. If you said to me, I'm going to buy a three bedroom home to make as much money as possible. I would tell you a three bedroom home is a home that has a lot of competition in the rental in the rental world. So a three bedroom home, you're gonna make a little bit less income. You're gonna have a home that will help pay your expenses. You can rent it uh, you know, on and off. And then, you know, there's other people that, uh, what's unique about Costa Rica is we have three peak holidays, which are Christmas, New Year's and Easter. Some folks choose not to rent their homes at all, but they'll, peak, they'll choose one or two of those peak weeks where they're getting two to three to four times the normal rate and they'll rent just that holiday and just that holiday might pay 90 percent of their expenses for the year by renting out that one peak week of the year so it depends on your goals are we trying to cover our expenses or are we trying to make money uh we can help put you into what we think the best opportunities are fantastic and anything else you guys want to say or add in closing Think what Pura Vida is. Pura Vida. We haven't even touched on that. You think it's a, a marketing gimmick? It really isn't. When you say hi, over here, people will respond with Pura Vida, which means pure life. And you hear it often enough that all of a sudden you start saying it, but it's the, their way of life. So when you see Costa Rica, usually the tagline after that is Pura Vida. Pure life. Love it. I love it. So we're going to end on that note. Pura vida, my people. Let's give uh, Victor and Grant a round of applause, everybody. Hey, J-Man. Yeah. Last thing I do want to say is if you have any questions, you can reach out to us and go to tamarindorealestate.com. All right, cool, because I was about to say that, but... Thanks for saying it. Um, thanks for tuning in, everybody. This is Jeremiah's J-Man Monero with J-Man Speaks. 
Ask the Experts Anything Meaningful Friday, every Friday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we're going to be doing an international real estate segment once a month. Uh, we started out here with Costa Rica. We're going to put it in the description as well as in the comments how you can reach Grant and Victor uh, to be sure to have that trusted resource. Uh, and, and we are, Victor and I talked about this briefly, but we're going to do some kind of real estate retreat with some continuing education or something in one of the resorts there. It'll give you a great opportunity to check out the area, uh, maybe invest in real estate or just right off a vacation. So this is Jeremiah's J-Man Monero with J-Man Speaks. Make it a great day, and we will see you next Friday.